factory or barracks factory barracks with the starport later on here mm. he might be trying to come in here and, and and take some some swings at dark early on i think you're right about that let's see how this one shapes up reactors going in production back at home there's some very brave marines here <laughs> Uh, I thought it was going to be maybe a push from the Terran, but it looks like it's going to be one of these double-pronged harasses. Kira might not know yet that there are roaches on the field. All right, oh, he sees he them now. And luckily for Kira back at home, there is a Liberator on the way. One of the best units you could have in this situation. <laughs> it's so funny. He comes in there to hit that base. He's like, oh, there's nothing here. I got to go back home. <laughs> Dark basically doesn't use that base. He uses that hatchery as a production facility. Mm -hmm. Uh, and drones are going to be attacked up here as these roaches come in. But the wall in, especially the Liberator, but even the tank is going to shut that down. But, yeah. you know, not a lot of losses uh, occurred here on either side. I like this more for Cure, though, because oftentimes when we see this roach attack, it's going to get something done. And sure. Dark is actually going to commit a little bit more now. Going to go for three Ravagers oh, before Finn. Liberators, of course. And try and take down the Liberator, potentially the Siege tank here. Yeah. But I don't think he has an overlord with this army, so he actually has to move up the ramp into range to be able to get any damage in. And Kira recognized that the fact that Dark has to move up the ramp gives Kira a little bit more time to react, so it's a lot easier for him to control the Liberator against this. And so Dark's just going to go back home and defeat. And this kind of goes back to what you said earlier, Tasteless. Dark losing that very first overlord. Yeah. This might be a ramification of it where he can't get that vision on the top of the ramp. Uh, we have more roaches being made, by the way, as the 1-1 one -one upgrades are coming here. So it looks like... Um Dark is going to set up for one of these kind of beefcake armies where he's got lots of roaches, lots of ravagers. Uh, and he wants to try to uh, supplant Terran's third base. Yeah, and Infestation Pit and Hydralisk Den also coming in here for Dark. Sure. So he's really filling out his tech tree. And the way that Cure is getting set up here with such a high siege tank count makes me think that this is going to be a three base push. The one thing that Kira has done a great job of this game is controlling the creep spread beyond everything else. Oh, those lurkers. Huge hits there. Gets a nice handful of Marines. Now, in a little bit here, by the way, we're having ghosts come out into the game. So it should be the moment where Zerg or oh, wants. These, these oh, lurkers are what? huge. That's so much damage. They will eventually get cleaned up. But Dude, that was a very cost of trade. About a fourth of the supply just disappears there to a handful of lurkers, which can easily be remade. Um, so the ghosts are coming. Now, when we get enough ghosts, and we're not we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. Um, Zerg needs to get in there before that. And, and frankly, I don't see any movement. So maybe I had a bad read on this. I thought Zerg was going to get active pretty soon here. Uh, I don't know if we're waiting for upgrades or, 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 or things to morph. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe adaptive talents is I'm what we sure want. I'm not sure either. Perhaps the plan is here for Dark to contain the Terran on four bases as we've seen a lot of Zergs do. And maybe Cure going for the Smith base here, once it gets spotted by Dark, will be the cue for Dark to begin attacking because that's when Terran is going to be spread the most thin. Right. And it's the two gases, gases number 9 and 10, that are most critical for the Terran really achieving their late game potential because you see Terran right now adding in Liberators, two factory siege tank, he's making a lot of ghosts. He really doesn't have a lot of gas right now despite all of these geysers being up on four bases. And yeah, Dark is just going to allow Kira to get up on five bases without too much contention. And this is kind of a head scratcher for me because oftentimes Zerg is going to be sitting on 90 plus drones and building a huge bank in situations like this. And although the usual MO for Zerg is to stop that fifth base from getting up, in any case, you would expect them to have a higher economy. In this situation, Dark is playing a lower eco game and he's not attacking, so he's not trading out these units. And yeah, I guess, you know, Cure, hmm. after staying back, or goes, I guess I've got everything. I thought I was going to be kind of deflecting your attacks. Whatever the big engagement is going to be, it's going to be critical here for Dark. Well, I think we're about to get there now because you know, at this point in time, Terran's going to start to push into these bases that are frankly very easy to attack into. I don't see any lurkers over here. I see Broodlords that are going to morph, but they're going to be, yeah, well, we're going to morph. They're going to get picked off here. Nice um, network in production here for Dark. Yeah, I don't know. I, okay, so... What we talked about, you know, with this map and everything else, stated, it's, it's kind of being illustrated here. I mean, this is a small map. It is. I thought Zerg was going to try to fight and control the Terran, and then he didn't. And I don't know what to say other than now this looks like a Terran uh, on in the campaign level where you're slowly pushing across the Zerg. Zerg's not doing anything. Uh, he's getting to fill in all these spots. The map is almost cut in half. 
which is bad for the Zerg, by the way. It's very bad for the Zerg, especially if Terran is able to secure this base in the middle with a high-res uh, Vespian Geyser. Good Lord sieging down the sixth base here for Cure. We'll be able to take down one siege tank. Files also taking down a Liberator is now Tactical nukes are on the field here for Cure. He's going to be attacking the fifth base with that. So it's become really like a game of territory here. Uh, this is going to become, I think, the point of tension here as these bases are just, you know, in eye shot of each other. Yeah, they're so close in proximity. And either player securing their base and killing the opponent's base would be a huge win. So next couple of minutes over here, Absolutely crudal, critical for both players. Um, I don't know that there's enough Broodlords to actually do anything. Terran's going to be able to get nukes. By the way, good idea here from Cure. You want to land all your mules here and just soak up the minerals while you can. Yeah, because if you lose it, it's like, all right, whatever. We got what we needed. You don't want to give that over to the Zerg. This is a tough engagement here for Dark as well, because although he has 120 army supply, so much of it is in spellcasters. He has something like seven or nine investors, and there's some nice fungal growths coming down. Getting a lot of value out of those Brillords as another tactical nuke is going off somewhere on the map. I think that ghost actually died. Some static defense being made over here on the right side for Dark. This is such an odd game. And it is going to start to really draw out. By the way, only one location on the map has not been uh, mined from. It's true. Uh, so, I mean, we're at the point where, like, we're going to run out of bases. Now, one thing to note, normally, if you've heard me say this, you know, many, many times before, it's, well, that's usually uh, better for the Terran, right? But Zerg never really overextended. Zerg turtled as much as the Terran turtled, right? Zerg's almost only taking fights they can win. Yeah, uh, Zerg is being a lot more cost-efficient than we normally see, and hold yeah. that thought actually takes this is a huge engagement coming in. All the investors get EMP'd and sniped right in the beginning, so th these fungals are pretty much all that Dark has. But meanwhile, there's a big attack on the other side of the map, hitting this entire base. Uh, big kills there, although there are not that many minerals left. Yeah, 24 SCVs do go down. A lot of those investors out of energy, but not dead, as Dark will be losing this base. So both players trading out one base for each other, but Cure right now with a bigger resource bank. Makes me think this is a scary position here for Dark because here at 3-Max, he's adding in another Siege Tank, he's adding in more Ghosts, he's getting his vehicle weapons. As the game goes on, Kira's army is going to be harder and harder to deal with for Dark, and I don't think that was a cost-efficient enough trade there for the Zerg player. Um, and it just feels like Kira's in complete control of the map. Dark does have this base mining to his credit, but it's such a difficult position to play from. And even this trade right here, cleaning up this attack at the top right, that's costing a lot of Banelings for Dark. It's not very cost efficient spending those on uh, Marauders, but he just doesn't have a lot of options right now. And I I'm surprised that Kira hasn't taken that high yield Vespian Geyser. Okay, there it is. <laughs> once again, getting rebuilt. And Kira, the once he takes one of these perimeter bases again, notice that he stopped dropping mules at that forward base. I think he's begging all of the energy so that once the left or the right side, which are a little bit less safe, get taken. He drops 12, maybe more mules on yeah. them and just vacuums up all of the resources as the orbital starts to morph over on that side. Actually, planetary, so he really wants to hold down that position. And him double expanding like this allows him to kind of secure at least one of these bases and land all of those mules. And it feels like Dark is just like you said, completely cornered. He was able to take that one base on the left side, but the army for Cure is so technical, it is so advanced. This is effectively Ghost Mech, which is about as strong as any army composition could possibly yeah, be. Yeah, this is like this ulti ultimate, ultimate endgame army. Now, let's point this out as well. Like, I mean, I think Dark's probably dead, but there's, it's possible that like Cure overextends a little bit, gets a little bit too headstrong. And then it comes down to like, you know, both these uh, locations of minerals, uh, they drain out and, and maybe there's some kind of scrappy play from from there. Like right now we're seeing a huge amount of the mech. Basically the entire mech army is going to be picked off as we all know you can't really push with an army like this into Broodlords. Yeah, that so, was a pretty good engagement there for Dark. Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, I, I almost wish we could tell the Observer to kind of go <laughs> zoom out. 
and, and figure out. By the way, that's not the greater spire, so you can still make Brood Lords here. Uh, Dark is building an extra spire just in case. <laughs> just in case he also spire. loses the greater spire. It's the spire. stun double for the other spire. <laughs> now. So Cure Ter will eventually remax here. I, I wonder what his production is back at home because this is a very slow remax for Cure. And one thing that we haven't really touched on is that if these players have another big engagement, Dark has all this all these hatcheries, all this larva. He'll be able to very quickly remax, right? Yeah, that's true. Whereas Kira just has the production of the main base. He hasn't really added a lot of additional factories or barracks out on the map. Now, we've got what I would call an inverse TVZ, where the Zerg's the turtler <laughs> and the Terran's the one that's trying to come out and end him. Uh, Zerg does still have enough like resource nodes that are available that you can play this out. I also want to point out, I think the one way that Zerg could win this long term is to win a fight maybe like this one and then pounce on production. Yeah. Their production is is in a lot of ways just inferior compared to what Zerks can do, right? Now, if he is able to win an engagement and also get a Nidus Canal up in the main base of Cure, which is a lot of ifs, but if he's able to make that happen, it could be great for Dark. With the engagement coming in, these ghosts gonna try and get their snipes, but the Lord's able to micro back and... Okay, so that's a big win. It is a big win. And it, you know, at what cost? Basically none. But this push continues on here. Now, where are the rest of the Broodlords? Because this hatchery is going to go down. All 12 Broodlords still standing. Couple of things to note, guys. Look at the gas for Terran. Not That's great. It's mostly out. Now, that means he could make, like, you know, if you don't have gas, what can you make? Hellions, Marines, you know, I guess command centers. He, but you know what I'm saying. Right. None of that really beats, you None know, of investors or Broodlords or so, anything to that effect. So we may just see a master class endgame here from Dark in, in, in kind of a moment where, the, you know, the ultimate plans from Dark kind of, at least for you and me, stay kind of emerge 25 minutes into the game. It's possible. I if it works. For a moment there, we saw on the bottom right, the total amount of resources lost for each player. And I I'm pretty sure that in any ZBT late game I've ever seen, this is the most cost efficient Zerg yeah, of like I mean, all time. It's almost one for one in and, terms of resources being spent. And here we go, more gas units just disappear at basically the cost of nothing. I mean, he's taking out tanks. 13 more Broodlords, are you insane? And let's keep in mind, like, what, what fights Broodlords, right? Like, Vikings yeah, are pretty no, good. There's but no air on them. Yeah, there's no air for Cure. Precisely. You, you, there's not the, the, the kind of tools. You know, a Thors and, 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 and some stuff, they can fight like a couple Broodlords, right? You can get a sniper there. But yeah. there's a moment where you sort of have this, this flooding mechanism um, that's just gonna chew its way wow. through everything. And so, now I, I don't want to call it yet. And look, Dark could very well still lose this. I feel like this is a game the Zerg should have lost a while ago, but here we are, guys. Um, yes, Dark is somehow navigating the CVT late game in a way that... I've just never seen anything quite like this. Exactly. Now, um, keep in mind, Terran has mostly been able to soak the resources on the right side of the map. Um, but he's also just sort of bled off these big amounts of units. And here we go, what is now, by the way, a maxed out Terran, you can't change your supply. You can't build, you can't, you know, produce your way out of this. We sort of have this actually borderline hilarious amount of Broodlords. This is a and lot of Broodlords. Now, could he go, <laughs> could he Could he beeline south and go into production? I don't know. I'm just saying, could it's happen. 25 Broodlords. <laughs> yeah. So he's going to drop in the main. Oh, but, I like but, this play a lot, actually. But, he's going to get the Hive. Yeah, but so what? You can remake the Hive. Normally, you when, you, when you get the Hive, you're getting the Greater Spire. You're going to get, like, the Lurker Den or the okay. Infestation Pit. This doesn't really matter, right? This yeah, the one thing that Dark really can't make from this position is, I, I suppose, Vipers, right, by losing the Hive. But right. Dark has oh, almost no resources. You know, a few minutes ago, we were looking at this, and... The banks were quite similar. Dark was mining a little bit more on the left side, and Cure was running out of the gas. But since then, the game has gone really passive ever since Dark morphed those 25 broods. And Dark really isn't mining a lot. And although Cure has 22 workers, those workers are mostly on gas. And he has a lot of mules that he keeps dropping on these exterior bases. So his mineral bank is all the way up to 3.6K. And what was a scary position for Cure now, I feel like is kind of scary for Dark because not only does he have a very small bank? He only has 12 larva total. He only has three hatcheries, I think. This is an odd looking army. <laughs> Bailing Broodlord. I feel like my brain is getting hot. 
Like I'm, I'm like overclocked right now looking at this. This is such a, an interesting army values. So, so Taryn is now forced to try to, to, to squeeze into this, this far upper left location. Taryn has to fight what is basically, uh, you know, the hardest army you could ever fight. Mass Banes with Broodlords. This like is it, a Max Zerg army that has 3k more resources invested yeah. in it than Terran. This is uh, like a, a, a level of StarCraft we just haven't seen, I feel like, in ages. Where he just sort of... He, Dark is so ahead of, of the meta right now that he looks at this and he goes, no, 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 no. You can make Terran overextend here. You can actually give Terran more of the map. You can turn the Terran into the Zerg. It's all going to come down to this engagement. Broodlord's struggling to find another connection here. Well, the thing is, anything they touch... It's, it's going to be, you know, a, a micro percent closer to winning this game because Broodlings are infinite. Um, yeah. And, and Repair is not. Um, Three more Thors in production. Now, in this moment where we're seeing supplies get traded out, I want to point out that Terran is, by the way, Terran ahead in, in, in Minerals and Gas Bank, by the way. Um, he's going to have an opportunity to try to um, reconfigure this army into one that can maybe take this fight. But again, there are more minerals and gas to soak on the upper left than there are on the bottom right. A small link counter text on the cross. I don't know if we're going to catch it on. It's actually a great play. It's going to yeah. stop the gas mining here for Cure. And really, with Dark Spank, it's kind of the only thing you can afford to make right now. 22 Brewlords, 55 Banes. So there's one base that it really has resources. This one down here, this will be disappeared if he lands mules there. Uh, both sides have basically sacked workers. I was wondering if we we're gonna have an infrastructure attack here. I don't. I guess we're not yet. And so, Terran may, for the first time in what feels like forever, be on their back foot. Yeah, you know? it's kind of an interesting position because Dark really has no incentive to push across the map from this spot. He has two mining bases. His bank is almost non-existent, so if he loses a fight, he cannot remax. This is all he's got for a long time. So I think they're both almost down to one base. See, so the base in the upper left shot, that's pretty research. This is what oh, I was talking about. Man. So if you come in here, now there's not a lot of workers for Terran, by the way. There's 21 SCVs. This base is going to evaporate pretty fast. Now, Terran can try to do some kind of base trade-ish stuff, but again, it's Thor's, you know, trudging across the map. Yeah, and Dark's going to move back over here to this position. Those ghosts very far forward. Now, he may have forced him to commit. This may have been part of Dark's plan all along. The Thor's come in. They fire one volley oh and then retreat God. back. One Thor goes down during all that. 21 Broodlords now. He's going for it. All Bane's right. going to come in. Let's do this. All the Banelings coming into the front line. They're actually getting stuck because he's just mind controlled every single Thor. He's got to manually kill them here. Dark just waiting to take the engagement. He doesn't aim move with the Banelings because he wants to get the maximum hits. And he completely wipes Cure's army. 18 Broodlords still standing. Ghosts on the move, though, in mass. That Cure is going to spend all of his gas on three more Thors, two more Ghosts, two more Liberators. Besides that, he has only Minerals right now. And Zerg's just gone for Zerglings, which could be Banelings, of course, but not a lot of gas in this picture. And after the engagement, you know, I was kind of expecting this big fight, and one player just emerges victorious and walks away with the game, but that was quite close. Yeah, I, I don't know if he should have sent all the Banes there. I don't want to nitpick too much, but... Here we are, and I think a game we may never end up casting a game like this again. The Banelings um, are going to, the, the Zerglings, excuse me, are going to try and come in and maybe catch some of these units, but. Yeah, you know, and by the way, we're at the point in time in a game like this, even the Zerglings are, uh, you know, precious, and <laughs> you want to get as much uh, value out of them as you can. Right, and one question that I have now is. This may be one of the most interesting games of the entire year. I think it already is. I'm, I'm uh, trying to think about this, the way these two armies engage, and there's so many less Thors in this army here for Cure, but there's more Liberators and more Ghosts. Does this beat almost pure Broodlord? Because that's really what Dark has. He has Broodlords, he has what's well, going to be soon seven Infestors, and I think seven Queens. Nine I'm not queens. sure. I mean, there are Infestors. Infestor Ghost thing is kind of it's either tricky. whoever catches who first. But is there an answer to the Liberators here? Uh, for dark, if yeah. there if there isn't, then well, that's a good point. Is really cure able to zone? Well, can he just like make a few corruptors here? He doesn't have that much left. Well, the so corruptors would get sniped. It's such a tricky problem. 
Here coming in again. Doesn't want to lose any of these ghosts. Every unit is precious in this situation. Keep in mind, you know, the, the, the splash damage from the tanks isn't helpful for the no. Terran right now with, with Broodlords. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying that he should have made tanks. I really don't know. Oh, my God. We're, we're, we're going to take this game, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, you know, siege tanks are not always your friend in moments like this. I think for a moment there, Dark was attacking his own broodlings with his broodlords to get more broodlings. I think you're <laughs> into right. The yeah. fight. I think he was trying to chain it. Just insane. Now, the most important location where the Zerg's mining from, it remains untouched. Only four Thors out here for cure. Now again, these siege tanks, do you want to be in siege mode? I'm not so sure. The ghosts are going to come forward. The fungals come down. Big fungals coming these in. These broodlings are going to come in here. The siege tank shots are going to connect them to some of the ghosts. There are still eight ghosts in this game, now seven, six. Only nine broodlords left, though. I mean, these are better than even trades you can get. Four ghosts, six liberators, and three Thors standing here for cures. The supply is almost dead even. Dark's going to do a counterattack with a handful of Banelings and Lings in one of the most scrappy late game ZBTs I have ever seen. And Baneling Landmine right here. Baneling Landmine cure does avoid it. Yeah. Four ghosts here. All right, he takes the ghost. Oh. Is he going to get the... No, gets taken out. And that's very expensive here for Dark. Yeah, that's an Infester gone forever. He scans now, sees that other Infester. Run! <laughs> Trying to scurry away. Does get one hey, fungal growth. And take what you can get. Just do that damage. Keep running. Keep making him scan. Yeah, Cure does have to spend minerals to repair those units. More queens in production. I like this from Dark. I feel like the, the most cost-effective units you can make here is Dark are more queens and more Infestors because... Those are effectively just going to use energy, right? You're not going to trade them out really in the fights. You might lose a couple Broodlords in the engagements, but besides that, you're ideally just losing Broodlings. And Tasis, I don't think that Dark has a greater Spire anymore either, right? Not, not that he can really make too many more no, Broodlords I, I given the economy. Does. I think he does have a greater Spire. Isn't it at the top left? Am I, am I wrong? I'm not sure where it is. So... The incomes have slowed down to a crawl. It's a lot of okay, liberation nice fungals. zones. Those fungals are a lot of damage on the mech units. SCV is being pulled to repair. Again, uh, siege tanks not always you know, what you want in moments like this. No, and these fungals are being very effective. It's kind of odd to say this, but the fungals are really Dark's well, most effective anti-air right now. You know, it's funny because fungal, you know, it doesn't it doesn't last that long. It doesn't do that much damage. But the thing is, is like. This is a game where, like, every little interaction kind of adds up. And so, so one of these is going to die. I mean, there you go. And Dark also knows that he can tank one shot from the siege tanks with these infestors before retreating yeah. back. And these Liberators now very low on HP. And look at the mineral fields on the minimap. Kira is very quickly running out. Soon he won't be able to repair his army anymore. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. And Zerg has Transfuse and the Natural Regeneration. So, I think in the ultimate late game scenario, unless Kira can somehow find an answer or get some snipes so, off. He's going to get the pool. Again, everything has to be remade. He could even get the Banelings Nest as Zerg is sort of uh, full on pulled back to the only real location of value. Again, spawning pools can be remade here. There's another Infestor just right here. He might try to get the Ghost in EMP. Broodlords are going to inch forward here exactly. and try to catch the sword. There exactly. It is. Double EMP. Oh, and he snipes actually, the ghost on the left side. Yeah, pushes the ghost into the range of the Broodlings. Ghost count down to four now. Now, the army supplies here are pretty even. It's 124 to 138. <laughs> Zerg huge armies. still <laughs> mines minerals. Yeah, both players mining Ta a small sum of minerals. By the way, uh, state Terran gas at zero. That's a great point. Zilch. So. As far as I can tell, that's it. This Liberator. You need some gas to repair? No, I'm it's all, it's, it's I think all it's minerals. All minerals. Okay, I'm okay. pretty sure it's I, all minerals. Yeah. Might um, be, we might be showing some I might be wrong. Here. Sorry, guys. I, you know, normally, it's not something you think about. No, I also do not like think this. about this. Yeah, I'm, I'm I straight not up sure. do not know. But I feel like Dark, he might have he might have done it. I think he's pulled it off. But also, but, how does know, he attack into the Terran? Yeah, no, that's a good point, because you have to kill his buildings. So these Lings are going to come up. Now, this oh, wait, that's a very good point. If this this could potentially well, reach it, a point where... It would I mean, have to be like a, a gentleman's draw, where yeah. they'd be like, yeah, we're not going to attack each other. The problem is, is that 
Well, I guess I guess actually even taking out Terran's infrastructure doesn't matter anyways. You can't really make anything. Consider this though, Tasteless. Yeah. Dark doesn't have an anti-air unit that can kill a floating building in a corner. And he would need to, I, I don't think he has a spire. I, I might be wrong about well, this, but many, I don't think he has a spire. He would need to, I think, build a lair and then build a spire and then build a corruptor to kill a floating CC in a corner. So oh there is a potential God. for a late game draw from Terra no matter what, if Cure realizes it. Which is insane. <laughs> yeah, which is totally bananas. So the more that I'm thinking about this, the more that I'm, I'm thinking Dark can only really play for a draw here unless he's able to mine enough resources for this. But look, he's, he's adding more structures. I don't even think he's going to have enough gas to build a Spire and a Corruptor. Okay, so That's he's... so much static. I actually didn't realize yeah. that Dark was able to build this little armada. This is his, 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 his airship army. This is the airship. Transfuses are key here. He cannot, Dark cannot afford to lose any of these eight Broodlords. Every loss is massive. And I guess with the minerals that are over here, uh, I do think you might be right about he can't make a Spire. I, I don't think he can. I don't, I don't even think he has a Lair. I think he would need to build a Lair and then the Spire and then the Corruptor, which is too much. And yeah, Cure floating these buildings. I, I do think that Dark's best case scenario here is a draw. And I think that might be he where we're heading because I'm looking at Kira's army. I don't see any way that he can fight into the Zerg where the Zerg like can't just disengage and transfuse everything, right? And there how does Kira kill him? I, 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 I see no world. 100% you can float your buildings all to the bottom right Yeah. if you're Terran. I see no world where Kira's army... And we're not missing something, right? There's no like unit that can also no. just... 20 drones, changelings, lings, overlord, overseers, eight brood lords, three banes, 17 infestors, and 19 queens. The queens are the only unit with a range attack. I think we're gonna have to redo game two. <sighs> After 40, this, this game is already longer than our first series yeah. of the day. <laughs> By a lot, actually. Um, and we might have a regame. It might, it might not count, Tasteless. <laughs> I think you're right. It seems like he miscalculated what he had left over here. <sighs> Just insane. It is a little concerning for me that Cure hasn't taken any of these floating buildings and just put one in the corner. I mean, time isn't going to be an issue, but that makes me wonder if he really fully realizes this scenario. Right. So every spine that goes down, it's one less building for the Zerg. It's also it's possible Cure can win this, by the way. Some nice fungals from Dark. It's a lot of AoE. He actually is going to be killing some units with these. Okay, so this actually could be a big mistake here. But again, I mean, it, you know, it, it, this could be the reality that this whole army just disappears and then and they both kind of sit there until a wrath comes over. Yeah, there's also a situation, so looking at this, there's another ghost gate TMP'd. There's not like a corruptor hiding in the far top left, No, there's right? no, look at the units tab, there's nothing. Oh, right, of there's course. There's nothing. I'm like racking my brain here trying to imagine every possible outcome. Yeah, it's well, kind of hard to reconcile like the reality yeah. of what we're seeing and this being a draw. But I, I here's the thing, we see it uh, Kier doesn't. Exactly. So Kier could be in a position where he thinks, no, 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 of course he has a Corruptor. Or, of course the game is lost. Like, when you're yeah. playing in the moment like this, it might just be completely out of your headspace where it's like, wait, I actually can force a draw. Yeah. You can't, you can't think like, well, maybe oh. he forgot to make a Corruptor, lol, lol, lol. The buildings, I think they're floating okay, to the corner. there's 22 gas and that, yeah, remaining in that one, that's not enough. Kier might be floating many, his buildings to the corner. I don't know how much gas you need total to get this. We have the Observer now poking around here. For zero, my sanity. Zero, zero. For my sanity, zero, I, zero. I just I just want Cure to send one one building to the corner, just so I zero, know that zero. he recognizes. <laughs> no, I know. Zero, zero. I'm getting dehydrated casting this tasteless. <laughs> I know. I, I decided to not pee before this best of yeah, five, and here I am. You messed up. <laughs> My bladder is screaming right now. And guess what? We're just going to go right into the redo of game two after this. Um, My god. I don't even know about hiding these infestors around here. How long has it been since we've even had a draw here in GSL? I don't know if I've ever casted a draw. I think maybe no. These fungals just chipping away. Dark knows that he can tank one siege tank shot or one liberator shot with these infestors, and he's using that knowledge so to just do continuous damage. A minor army supply increase here. Or not increase, advantage, I should say, here for Cure. 
but I think it's mostly in Hellbats. I, 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 yeah, that's I, probably true. It's 12 like, Hellbats is 24 of this army do? supply. I think a lot of this goes back to when he sent all those Banes in to fight that. That's so much res. Yeah. Can you imagine if that was a Spire and a Corruptor? Here we go. That Neural comes in. Hope it's anticlimactic. Now again, repair is gone for Terran. So like, you know, you can heal forever. Well, not forever, but you know, the, the, the regen on the medevac, in theory, you could just keep healing damaged units, but Thors are not gonna heal. Uh, we've, we're we gonna mm. start to run out of infestors, by the way. There's still a couple here, but how many infestors have you seen die over the last 15 minutes? A lot. That's a good point, but I, I don't think that Dark is going to let that happen. I feel like he's gonna continuously try and get something done, get some damage in with these infestors, and then once he gets a small number, maybe maybe seven, maybe eight, maybe nine, he'll just be okay, I'm, I'm content Did with this. Like fungal this? Is, is uh, fungal might be better. I mean, it's certainly better than what that was. <laughs> well, I guess the problem is, I was thinking fungal the SCVs, but it's like, I guess the medevac could heal that. The Two. only way that I see Dark losing this game is if he continues to bleed out units. And he somehow loses the bro these brood lords because besides the brood lords, it's really just queens and infestors, which don't you know fight well in a straight up engagement. I'm, I'm going to go back to what we were talking about earlier. The fact that there's not one building floating in the bottom right, I do feel like tells us that Cure does not have the right read on this. Like he might not realize the situation. He might think that it still comes down to this. And I, I, I'm a little bit confused by the way that Dark is playing it too by sacrificing these infestors because. I feel like Dark should be on the same page. But maybe Dark is playing with the best case scenario, imagining that maybe Cure doesn't realize there's a draw. Because well, both no, players should know. It's his game to, 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 you know, to do what he thinks is going to be best, right? So, like, I get it. Yeah, but... Now, Terran is kind of abandoning the, the river outpost. I don't know what's what's dying under there. Um, I think it was a missile turret under the barracks. Oh, okay, uh, the I thought barracks. it might have been, like, an SCV or something. He's going to go retreat back to the planetary, which does make the math probably worse for the Zerg. 55 minutes into this game, by the way. Uh, you know, it, it's... it's. How many times have you seen a Hellbat get assimilated? Yeah, we've seen it all now. Uh, is this an overextension? Fungal's going down! It's a lot of bio getting fungled. Hellbats as well. Hellbats can Here we go, heal. here we go, here we go. The Broodleads are starting to gnaw through this. A couple more chain fungals, and I think you know. Now the question is: Is Cure? You're no! Kidding. You are kidding me. Nothing can kill Crazy a lifted end, building. But at the same time, the worst episode of Game of Thrones I've ever seen.